Hello, my name is Dustin and welcome to networking. We're going to go over some basics of computer networking, including protocols and topologies in modern networking. We'll also be discussing some networking basics like the OSI model and the TCP IP model. After that, we're going to go over some common networking devices you may encounter setting up your home network or while on the job. Let's get started. So again, some learning objectives for this module are the network protocols, different network topologies and network architecture, some basic network plus information, including the OSI model and the TCPI model and the uh, similarities and the differences between the two. And then we're going to go over some network devices like routers, switches, firewalls, and NIDS versus NIPS. Protocols and topologies. In this section, we're going to go over what networking is and common networking protocols and topologies you may encounter. So what is networking? Networking by definition is the process of interacting with others to exchange information. Computer networking is exactly that. In order to exchange information, there needs to be some sort of process to share that information, like a common language. In modern networking, this process of defined rules and conventions is called network protocols. Modern protocols for computer networking mostly use packet switching methods to send and receive messages. These messages are in the form of packets. Packets are messages that are divided into pieces, sent across the wire or wireless in the case of Wi-Fi, and then reassembled at their destination. The most common network protocol family you'll encounter is the IP protocol family. Many other network protocols like TCP or UDP, HTTP, and FTP all work together and integrate with the IP protocol. The IP protocol suite has the task of delivering packets based on their IP address, which is assigned in the header of a packet. Because this relies on the IP address in the packet's header, IP defines packet structures that encapsulate the data. So there's two big versions of the IP suite of protocols, and that is IPv4 and IPv6. Uh, currently, IPv4 is still the dominant protocol of the internet, but as, as of October of 2018, IPv6 actually reaches about 25% of all internet traffic. Wireless networking uses wireless protocols. It's important to remember that the IP protocol family still applies here as well, but there are special protocols for wireless networks. Another type of network pro protocols that are extremely important in modern networking are routing protocols. And routing protocols are the rules that have been created for routers to communicate with each other, which allows modern networking to work. Without routing protocols, your packets would never be able to leave their network. Most wireless works in the 2.4 gigahertz or the 5 gigahertz range and is capable of varying network speeds. Some examples of some common wireless networking protocols include 802.11b, which is probably still the most prevalent wireless protocol. And then we've got 802.11g, which is a standard that improved upon the 802.11b protocol. After that, we've got the 802.11a, which started using the 5 gigahertz range and then 802.11ac, AC, I'm sorry, which is a newer protocol finalized in 2013, and you'll find this in most modern wireless phones, laptops, and smart TVs. One of the last protocols we'll mention that is used almost everywhere is Bluetooth. Bluetooth also uses the 2.4 gigahertz range, but transmits at a relatively low power, giving it a much smaller range than your typical Wi-Fi, approximately 30 feet or so. Routing protocols. Routers allow traffic to leave their network and continue on to other networks. Every routing protocol has three basic functions, discovery, route management, and path determination. Discovery is the process of identifying other routers on the network. Route management keeps track of all the possible destinations along with data describing the pathway of each, like the distance and time. Path determination is exactly that, determining the best path to reach a destination. There are two types of routing protocols that help determine which path is best. 
Link state enables routers to build and track a full map of all network links. Distance vector allows routers to work with less information about the full network area. And there are a couple different routing protocols we're going to go over. The first is RIP, or the Routing Information Protocol. That was developed in the 1980s for use on small or medium networks that connected to the network. It was capable of routing messages across networks up to 15 hops, or portions of a path, like devices. OSPF, or Open Shortest Path First, was created to over come the limitations of RIP, like the 15 hop count restriction. It's an open public standard available across many industry vendors. This is a link state protocol. EIGRP was developed as a successor to OSPF to improve configura configuration and better performance than uh, OSPF. This is a distance vector protocol. ISIS, or the Intermediate System to Intermediate System, is very similar to OSPF, but it more, it's more easily adaptable to specialized environments. Um, it doesn't use the IP protocol suite. BGP, or the Border Gateway Protocol, detects modifications to the routing tables and communicates these changes to other routers. Typically, this is used by uh, ISPs or Internet Service Providers to join networks together. Um, it can be very difficult to configure, so it is a pretty specialized thing. As we mentioned, modern protocols for computer networking mostly use packet switching methods to send and receive messages. These messages, of course, are in the form of packets. And packets are those messages that are divided into pieces and sent across the wire or wireless and then reassembled at their destination. Because the, these messages are divided into packets, the packets can then take different routes to the destination, which can be much more efficient than everything following that same path. A typical packet contains three main portions, the header, the footer, and the data. The header contains instructions like the length of the packet, the packet number, protocol, destination address, and the originating address. The payload or the data of the packet is the actual data that's being sent, like pieces of an email or an image. The trailer of a packet or the footer typically contains information that tells the receiving device that it's at the end of a packet. It may include the CRC or cyclic redundancy check, which helps determine if the full packet has arrived without any errors. For example, if you need to send an email to a friend, the email will first be broken into a fixed size, determined by the network that you're on. The network you are on uses um, fixed lengths. Um, so in this example, we'll say it uses a, a fixed length packet of one kilobit or um, 1024 bits. So if your email is two kilobits, it would then send three packets because the header and the footer of the requ uh, packet require some space as well.